been working. Okay. So this is working. Hi everyone, my name is Gary, and I'm a student with the Global Financial Data Project. And I wrote a little script to help clean with the data. I wanted to share with people because I know data cleaning is really messy. And hopefully this script saves you some time with it and so you can go do more analysis and more things of value. So if you haven't already, please download R in R Studio and open it up. And you can pull up this code if you want to follow along or if you want to make some edits. So first thing I would suggest you do, download these packages. If you, haven't, you only need to download a package once, and you can do so by typing in the commands install.packages. Quotation, and then the package name. In this case, fly R. This is giving me this warning because I already installed it. Cancel. But if you haven't already, please download each one of these packages. Then put this command, enter the commands over here to activate those packages because we'll be using them later on. Next, import the data set that we originally got. So if you're using the new R Studio ID and if you're not yet familiar with R, I might suggest using the button over here, import data set from CSV, browse wherever you store the file. So in my case, I sort in downloads, big test, open, and it shows you if this is the correct one. It is correct, and I import it. Okay. So for me, I personally don't really like using this method of download because as you can see you get a couple of warnings. So what I would instead do would be highlight this part which shows the pathway, put it in here, and change it from read underscore CSV to read dot CSV, which I did here, and then label it in whatever object you want. In this in my case I called it Excel. Read the data, it should take five seconds. Move this, and now looking at this. Okay, so let's open let's open up the data. U Excel, and you could explore it to your heart's content. But I'm going to tell you a couple of stuff that I found a little bit wrong with it. One, there are a lot of duplicates. There are duplicates of the names in the data set and then there are also duplicates of some of these rows like okay this isn't an example but <clears throat> this is a fictitious example but I would find like QTC management inc later on in the data set and all the column variables are the same I ideally you don't want to do that for any of your data so that's why you're using the unique function so it gets rid of all the duplicates and just leaves one of each variable, excuse me, one of each row. And I told you how I found duplicates of the name. It's like these names in the data set. You want to get rid of those. And searching through, you know that there's only one version of them in the data set. And that is in row 14716. You can see this button. So, four, seven, one, six, comma. This is the row that you want, and this is the column that you want. So I'm pull, telling you to just pull the entire row because I'm not leaving anything in the column. And I'll show like all everything that we everything that we originally have the name of. So you want to get rid of it. Also, I don't know what these rows are for, like x, x13, so I'm going to get rid of it. Best not to deal with, just best to drop anything unnecessary. 
Now, let's move on to cleaning the variables that we had to get. And we're going to start with the global rank. So what we want to do is we want to turn this, clean it up, turn it into numeric, and preserve the values. We can do this by first examining it. So I ran command enter to put this line down here, or you just type in the console. And already some of the problems are this slash XCA, and then towards the beginning, you have slash XCA in the front, slash XCA in the back, and then you have commas and these weird symbols. So you're going to get the Excel global rank, and you're going to use the pipe function. What the pipe function does is it allows you to continue to apply different functions without repeating like which data set you want to use. So you're telling R to use the string replace function on Excel global rank, and then use string replace on that, and so forth. I'm going to show you why it's a lot easier, because there's an example where I didn't use the pipe function, and you can tell how that code's like really messy. So get the Excel global rank, find and replace all the slash XCAs, and the reason why there's two of these dashes in front of it is because in R, to understand the function, or to understand these special symbols, you need to put two of these dashes. Back da I don't know what these are called, but dashes in front of it. So you're telling it to go, find the slash XCA and remove it from the function. And then this function here tells it to grab the XCA, but towards the end. Remember how a couple of these have slash XCA towards the end? And replace it with nothing. Along with that, you're telling it to get rid of this weird E and commas, and then change it to an as our character, which it already is, and then to as dot numeric. The reason why I do as dot character and then as dot numeric is because for a couple of these variables, I found that if you change them directly via as dot numeric, some of the variables change, and you want to ideally preserve as much of the data as possible during the cleaning process. So I would just recommend you do this. Run it. And it's introduced by coercion warning. It's fine. It's referring to these and a couple others. But it should work out. I've taken a look at it. The only problem with this, and I leave it up to you guys to decide what you want to do, is if you ran a box plot, you can see this weird graph. So I'm guessing for a couple of these, a person put some too many extra zeros or whatnot. And you could probably you could find them find the value of it using the which function. Like which one of these is greater than five to the, times ten to the power of seven. And you can just get rid of them. But I, I leave it up to you guys. So with that, you've already fixed the global rank, and you put it in numeric form. Now you want to work on countries. Before you do the countries, there's a little nifty trick. So earlier we downloaded the package Our World Map. Our World Map has a data set that has all the countries. You can see it. Some of them are misspelled, like Vietnam. I've corrected that. And then a couple of them have some like extra space. I'm trying to find a good example. Bosnia and Herzegovina, Central African Republic. So correct Vietnam. Turn all of these into a lowercase. You'll see why later on. And trim the white space. And then I couldn't find Hong Kong, Singapore, Puerto Rico, Qatar, Guam, and Korea on the list although those numbers appeared a lot in our country, so I just continued adding to it. 
So you see how it ends at 149 for the 150th variable in the countries. Put Hong Kong, Singapore, Puerto Rico, NA, Qatar, Guam, Korea. So we're going to run all those functions. All right. Afterwards, now to actually tackle the country in your data set, you're going to import all the country, all of this, into an object called country with this function. And then you can table it to see all the errors. So you got a lot of different errors here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to trim the white space. We're going to put all these into lowercase. For example, there's a good one with the United States. Like these two are perfect, except uppercase changed, change, changes. So that's how the string to lower function helps. Then you're going to get rid of these little items. And what you're essentially doing is replacing the old country with the new country after you use that function. This is what happens if you don't use the pipe operator. See how like before we only use a couple of lines while well, here, yeah, it's quite a lot. So you use the pipe operator whenever you can. In addition to that, when I tabled it, I found that one of them has a number when it should be a country. So I find which one it is, put it in the index, change it to NA. Then I also find the one that have nothing in it. I think it should be this one. Change that to NA. And then unknown we know it's NA. And I keep doing, I keep going and finding replacements. And for the most part, the replacements, replacement functions were put in correct order because if you use string replace A with excuse me, data set like country and A and then mean, it's going to go find every single one with every single letter with an A and replace it with mean. And you don't want that, so be careful. It's handy for different things, but for individual ones, you would you want to use the which function. Find the which one, get that index, and put it in the country, and then you can change it person, like one at a time. As you can probably mention, see that the method was taking a pretty long time and multiple lines. So one of my friends actually told me a neat trick uh, using the countries from earlier. So we're going to find which countries are not on the list of countries that we made. Okay, so which countries from the Excel sheet that we have and that we cleaned so far? We have this 25 lines of code are not in the countries that we got of the entire world from previously. And then we're going to table it. So only 89 of these countries are not on our list. So we only need to change 89 variables or drop them into NAs. So I'm going to put all of them in a variable called messed up ones. <laughs> and I'm going to sort them out. So let's table all the messed up ones. Okay, these are all the messed up ones. So you got like 14 NAs, 18 United States Aurelia, I don't know what that is, and whatnot. So you want to change it. You could do so by, let's see, remember country, pipe it, Australia to Australia, to United Kingdom, me to United Kingdom, and everything that you want. So you update country. Then you can take a look at it again, up, update the messed up ones, and then to help you get the names only, you would put it in, save it into an object called solo. So these are still the messed up ones. 
find whichever one is equal to ca, can, canada, cn, and change it all to Canada. And then you don't necessarily have to update the messed up ones, but I like doing it to keep progress to keep track of my progress. Then you can see that like J JP, JPN needs to be changed to Japan, Trinidad and Tobacco needs to be changed to Trinidad and Tobago, London, United Kingdom, NA and N dot A into NA. Which I'm gonna do all right now. And update it again. So the only ones that you're left with are these. So I, I honestly don't know what th these mean. And I don't I don't think Gibraltar shows a country. And I don't know, like for these, unless somebody can figure out which one they want as the United States or Australia, I'm just gonna turn it on to NAs. And you could do you could change these and do whichever you want by using this line and different versions of it. But for me I just I can't understand and I'm gonna assume like they're messed up so I'm just gonna turn it into NA through this function. So I'm finding which country is equal to whatever each one is and then I'm changing it to NA. Then I do messed up one, I update the messed up ones, and you should see that there's nothing in the messed up ones because all of them are clean. There is either a country or missing. And then the structure, you can see the structure is good. Actually, yeah, King of the United States, Venezuela. You should not see anything off here. And we're good. End of this. We're solid. For the country rank. Okay, so we got full rank, country. Now we want to do country rank. Remember over here how we got rid of the commas and weird variables? We're going to do the same thing for country rank. So you can just recycle the function. You can get the country rank type it into all these string replace functions and then store it as an object called country.rank2 table it okay everything looks good it should just be numbers but in character form uh, there is however one problem there's a couple of zeros in there so I don't understand how you can get a zero for a country rank so I'm going to assume that's just an NA. <clears throat> so I'm going to go find which country rank 2 is equal to 0. Change that into NA. And which also for somewhere in the data set. Okay, there it is. Shoot. There's a little question mark, right? Yeah, there it is. Oh boy. Okay, you can see these weird symbols. Probably change these. Yeah, see? If you try changing these into numeric, you get NA. And, try, and gets you that warning sign. So I'd much rather do that first. It's completely unnecessary, but I don't know, I, I just want to do it. Okay. So I don't think there's any more of those symbols. I'm fairly certain I've taken a look at this data set over six times, and those are the only ones like fine. But 
you just change it to numeric, and if those symbols are still there, which I guess some of them are, they'll just be turned into NAs, which is fine. And then if you do the structure, you can see just numeric. And then remember, going over here, the country ranks are still the same. Prove it to you. 20. Each one of these numbers are all the same. So nothing got changed uh, when you format it into numeric. So everything's good. And you save it all into an object called country.rank2. For each one of these little chunks of code, I wouldn't call it chunks, but little blocks of code, I wrote the variable of interest that you created next to it as a dash. So with country rank done, we'll move on to Excel underscore web creation here. Do this. Okay, so you table it. So right off the bat, you recognize that, okay, this should be NA, this should be NA, this should be NA, and, well, this should be NA. <coughs> but more so, the bigger trouble is that for this, you want years between your dates in weird formats, like this, and person put wrong wording, you have dates that are completely out of range, now, this is weird. Okay, these are all weird because you want the dates between 1983 to 2018. I'm guessing something got wrong in somebody's Excel sheet and it just got added to the masses. So what we're going to do is we're going to get all the names. We're going to create an index track of the years. Okay. Let me rephrase that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell R to create a for loop to go in here, find the index of all the numbers of our years of interest from 1983, the year the internet was born, to the current year, which is 2017, and mark those indexes. So for which creation.year is equal to the first year in our loop, put those numbers and an object called dispose, then keep adding it to index.track.year so that when you do all this, you'll have the indexes of all the indexes of all the years that you want. And now going back to your original object, you're going to subtract all those indexes. Yeah, these are all the ones that you don't want. These are all the ones that you want to get rid of. Unfortunately, so you're going to put an NA. And then if you table it, you can, know, you can see that only the ones of interest are there. And you want to, I want to drop the levels. all these excess levels so that it's in a nice little format over here and then tabling it looks good and then you, you just change it into numeric and you store it as an object called creation.year and we're almost done so bear with me the next item is I don't want to focus on these because kind of Category you just leave as is, and category underscore rank, we'll get back to. So, and we did web creation here. Web registration organization, you just leave as is, and then just change privacy. For privacy protection, you just want the zeros and ones. So we're going to create a list of the indexes that are zero and one, and combine them together and store it as wanted zero and one. So, put all the 
data from the Excel sheet for privacy. It's an object called pro.pre. Enable it. Most of it's already in zeros and ones, but you have the rest in just these scattered ones. So you just put all the indexes of the zeros and ones that you want into wanted zero and one. And then you remove it from pre, pro, pro, pro dot pre, and change the ones that are left over into MA. So that now, when you table pro dot pre, it's just zeros, ones, and NAs. And then you drop the excess levels, and you change it all into numeric. Table pro dot pre, so just zeros and ones. And the structure is of something that you like. And I just want to make sure that everything that we did is correct. So the first variable fix.globalRank, it's in numeric form, and there's 17,891 variables, which is what we had in our Excel sheet, so nothing, no variables got added or deleted, so it's good. Factor with our 57 levels, there's 57 levels from our country's data set, so we're good. Num numeric, numeric, numeric. Okay, it looks good. Now, that's the end of cleaning the new data. Now let's take a look at the old data. Formatting the old data. Let's see the structure. Also drop the excess levels. <laughs> Okay, looking at this or looking at the Excel sheet, you can see you want this as a character, and this is already a, as a character with different factor levels. Factor levels, factor levels, you don't need to change this, you don't need to change this, 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 this. You don't need to change up until, let's see, number seven, current employee plans. If you scroll down, you can see that the structure of this is factored with 809 levels. You want to change this into numeric. Actually, you want to change all these into numeric up until employee growth rate. So all data, numbers to make numeric. So specifically those, let's, let's table it. See, these are all numbers, numbers that you want, and show insight. Want to change these numbers into numeric? Let's create a for loop. So I created a for loop with the 17 to 29, but I kept getting, getting errors in the 17, so I split that away. So let's table it and see what we find. After tabling it, I found that there were one that had the XCA, towards the end. So I want to get rid of that. And then I want to trim the white space and then I want to change it into numeric. Then as you can see, so This is the original Excel sheet that wasn't modified when you viewed it. So if you look at 17, you can see 929, 833, 99, 999. Okay, it's all there. Nothing got changed. So it's all good. I actually did much more rigorous testing to prove that nothing changed, but for the sake of this video, I really don't want to go through that, but trust me, it's correct. And then the rest. There was no problem with change, changing it all into numeric, and you can move on. I use Panda as an index. Don't judge. All right, hold that up. Done with this. Okay, now I'm, 
I'm just repeating stuff now. Okay. Yes, we did this. Now time for the final frame. Final frame. So now you want your final result to be a data frame. And you know that for all these other ones, when you change the old data, this part right here, because here you change the actual data from the Excel sheet, and here you change the actual data into in the Excel sheet too. So that over here, you can just put Excel columns 1 to 34, and it'll be in the format that you want it. And then you, you put the next variable, which is column number 35, global rank over here, as, and we, we created a variable called fix.globalRank, which has the correct variables, and we're going to name that global.rank. Next, from our data set, we created an object called country, which with all the correct countries, and we're going to name that country in our data set, or in the data frame that we're creating. We named an object called country.rank2, and we're going to name it country.rank in our data frame, and we're going to pull the Excel categories, because that didn't change, and we didn't alter it. Next, we want the category rank, and you can just coerce it into numeric. I haven't had too much trouble. Okay, so Excel underscore category has some weird stuff in it, but for the most part, it shouldn't <clears throat> you could do this function without changing the data too much. Then you then you add the next column, which is the creation.year object that we have, and you name it web.creation.year. Pull the 41st Excel sheet, because we need to change that, the web registration organization, that's correctly formatted, and then name the last one, and the last object we have, which is pro.pre, and name it web.private. Final result, which is fine. And then you could write it, create it, it into a CSV file. But looking, let's compare it. So it should be the same as the Excel sheet, except a little bit cleaned up. So you have a couple more NAs. But for the most part, it's something that the final results over here is something that you could work with because it, it formatted things the proper way. And I'm going to show you why that's important. So now I want to run correlations, for example. Oops. I forgot. Okay. So, for example, I want to see the correlation between the web private results, country ranks, and revenues. So I put it all into checking. And then I get the complete cases of uh, these ones, and I find the correlation. So this is the correlation. I should probably add names to these, but this is the cor this first one over here refers to web private, second one country rank, third one revenue. And originally you couldn't have done that with the original data set that you had. For example, use web where is it? Anyway, yeah, you couldn't have done that with the original because the format was a little bit off and there were some uh, it wasn't properly cleaned. And then you could also do the Pearson, Kendall, and Spearman. Well, thank you so much. Again, I apologize if uh, this wasn't as thorough and in-depth as possible, but I, I'm open to any questions. If you have, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, I want to help out as much as possible. And uh, go talk to you guys and play around with it. Uh, thank you so much and have a great day.